What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> Goblin Mini version 2 at 90 watts? <laughs> I know. I know. So, you're looking at a title and you're wondering, wow. A rebuild. Why the rebuild? Because, oh, crazy story. So I'm at work one day, right? And I build the Griffin pretty much the same way. Fuse clapping coil. 28 gauge core. 40 outer. Hang on. Uh, six wraps, 2.5 mil bit, right? I build a typical way you'd build any velocity style deck. I have done a few, a little technique. One day I was at work and I thought of this and I thought, wow, I wonder how that would work. What it would do? Would it bump it up? Would it? Well, I'm curious. So I came home and I did it. And today I rebuilt it, right? And this is a spur of the moment video here. Today I rebuilt it back to the normal way. And wow, I just wanted to rip it right out. Uh, so it definitely makes a difference for me and, and the build that I'm using and, and stuff like that. It just makes it such a big difference that I just tore out those coils and I'm going to rebuild it the way that I liked it. And because of that, I thought I'd throw up a video. And we we'll talk about it. Um, it's going to be fun, man. Just for fun. No review, right? We're not going to review it. I've already reviewed the Griffin. So, we're going to take it down, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. We're going to have fun with it. Except for I did forget something. Here we go. Ah! Mm -hmm. There we go. You know, I kind of like it. Something like that looks pretty good. That's actually a better working area for me. Yeah. A little better working area for me. Uh, hopefully that'll help me get in there. Yeah, that should, that should be pretty good. So as you can see here, we have the Griffin tank. As you all know and love, I have the top screws notched all the way in, as you can see here. I'm only going to be using these bottom holes. This one. And this one this is the only one I'm going to use for both coils. Why? Vaping is a game of minor details. Small little things make the hugest difference, right? Anything that has airflow close to the coil, something like the Goblin Mini, for instance. Well, I got one, I'm looking at one right now. Uh, <laughs> is so close to the coil and that's why the flavor is so booming in my opinion. Now when you usually build this tank, it's great flavor, right? This tank has killer flavor in it. Whatever build you like, this is where I want you to insert it. You don't have to follow my build, man. It's just what I like in it. And what I recommend, you know? But I mean, you don't have to do it, dude. Whatever build you like in the Griffin, if you got one by now, add it to here, just use the same technique and just at least give it a try. What can it hurt, right? So the idea is the coil usually sits about what? Right here? Maybe about dead center about? So we're a little ways from the airflow hole, which is not a big deal and the flavor's already great. When you, it takes a little extra effort to build it like this, but when you lower the coil to about there by using both just the bottom holes here, the flavor is super pronounced. It's fantastic. I'm having a blast with this thing. And it's been my daily driver. I use it everywhere. So we're going to go from here to here with our coils on both sides. Now, usually when you do something like that, you will restrict the airflow in here. Right? You will restrict, especially when it's traditional T pose or whatever post is right here. But because the Griffin is missing this, the airflow is still the same. Won't restrict it at all. I feel no drag from this. And when I first did, I thought, God, I don't know if it's worth the trouble. 
I could definitely tell the flavor, but there's definitely a bump in flavor. But after I switched to the other way, um, yeah, dude, like, I just want to go back to this. And that's, that's why I said, okay, that's how I knew I needed to film this. So, rebuild Griffin. Uh, just an example here, something like the Tsunami, I know everybody's got their Tsunamis by now, this is a sample unit, to be honest, can't even use this thing. But I thought, wow, if it works so good on the Griffin, how would it work on the Tsunami? Same difference, right? So check us out, man. So there it is. There's a Tsunami, you all know and love it. Look how the screws bought him out. Terrible. Um, same, same concept here, guys. I dumped it. I dumped the coils down to the bottom, right on top of those airflow holes. Wicking's better, flavor's better, that I've noticed. I highly recommend you guys to, you know, mess around with something like this, you know? That's the fun thing about building and stuff like that. But yeah, and, and I so I thought, gosh, if it works like in the Griffin, is it going to work, you know, on, on other stuff? Any other kind of, you know, anything that utilizes this kind of post configuration and the airflow coming in from the bottom and whatnot I mean yeah yeah it's great man I mean right on look at that I mean right over top of those airflow holes but not touching them right get a short that way no center post plenty of airflow bit of vape great for as long as I used it and we'll talk about the problems I had with this sample unit when we do a review of the Tsunami, eventually. So let's do it. What do I have here? Put these on the rod. Both of these. I have 28 gauge Fuse Clapton, 28 gauge Core, 40 gauge Outer, 2.5 mil bit. There you go. And I've also kind of kinked the... I've bent the legs, so they're sitting fairly... Um, oops, I dropped one. So they're just kind of running in, uh, so they're kind of running in the same direction here. There we go. See what I mean? That's just going to help because when you look at the eyelets on the Griffin, they're the same plane. They're the same level. So that's just going to help put it in. So building is going to be a little tricky. Just a little bit. Because now you're not fid you're fidgeting with all four of your leads in each two leads each eyelet and we're just gonna go ahead and start by popping one in and I'm barely gonna put it in there just just till it kinda catches and holds itself spin it around now we're gonna slide in the next set can be tricky here I like to go over top of the coils and I almost crisscrossing them so both of these first ones from the first coils are on the bottom, and I just act like I'm putting these on top of those leads, and it should slide in fairly easy. And I'm just going to simply push it in with my fingers, as you can see, right to the airflow holes. About right there, and I want them right on the airflow holes. I'll go ahead and give that a spin. So there you go, we dropped the coils just a little bit. Not much, right? the name of the game baby now with both fingers I'm gonna hold my coils in place that one I just bumped because remember we don't want it touching anything we just want it directly over the airflow holes now I'm gonna hold these with my fingers and I'm gonna tighten down this screw right here and after I tighten down this screw here get it kind of holding in place I'm gonna evaluate the situation we're looking really good there and, and what makes it really good is that they're kind of sitting in the, pretty much the same place. They're going to get a little ratty. They're going to kind of do their own thing just a hair. Don't sketch. All can be fixed. Again, fingers on your coils. Just to hold them there the best you can. Snug it up. And that's what we're looking at. See how they're kind of beat up right now? Don't sweat it, man. Don't sweat it. Let's go nice and tight here. Nice snug connection. Because so we're going to be doing some pushing. There we go. That's good. So now I want to clip it up. Get in there. Make sure you're clipping the right one.
And I just did the classic mistake. Dude, my girlfriend is gonna step on that later and kick my ass, dude. <laughs> Trevor. Always hold the lead you're about to clip. When you clip it so it doesn't go flying everywhere like I just did. Come in. Pull this one to the side. Same with this one. Pull it all the way to the side. And we're going to clip it again. Get as close as you can. I just did it again. There we go. That's what we're digging on right now. Everything's kind of clipped. And I see how these, the extra leads are kind of sitting there. If you can, go ahead and push those up. We're back somewhere. Get them out of your way. Why? Because cotton will snag all over that and uh, make your wicking way harder than it has to be. Again, I, I can see it on this side. I'm just going to push these right against. There we go. And I'm going to do one more little screw down. Everyday ghost, man. Got him back. There we go. So ratty, right? But still pretty much right where I wanted it. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to insert my driver. I'm going to work one coil at a time. Insert it in. I'm going to gently push it all the way over. Just till it tightens up. See how it tightened up right here? Take it out. I'm going to try and do this on camera. I'm going to slide this in the other side. I'm going to take my finger. I'm going to put my finger on the coil. Keeping pushing against that driver as I push it forward. Now you don't want to go too hard here, but you want to keep pressure with your finger just till it's centered. Just like that. We'll do it again. I want it right over the airflow hole. Let's do it again. Same thing. Pop it in, push it over. Just till it tightens up. See that? See how it's tightened? So we push it over just till it tightens up. Pull it out, other side, done. Finger, pressure pushing this way as you slide it over. Make it resistant, put some resistance on it. Take your time. There we go. I could even get a little more centered than that. I think I might, mm, I might, yeah, I think I'm going to. It's not bad. As long as it's right over those airflow holes, I'm happy with it. Looks good. Pop it off the tenor foot stand. So we're gonna we're gonna see some kind of jankiness here. I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna do my damnedest to fix that. So I'm gonna take it back you up. So I'm just going to take it, level them out just a hair, straighten them up. The one lead's kind of doing a jig, but honestly it's kind of a pine. It's just doing a little jig there. I want it nice and flat and close to that airflow hole without touching. That's pretty good. Look at the height. Bad, not bad. This one could go down just a hair. Not bad. Pretty even on the height, which I'm really happy with, but right on top of those airflow holes, as you can see there. Let's measure this thing out. Simple, right? I mean, it's not, it's not bad. It's not bad to build it like this. It's just a little different. Measure that. It's going to measure slow because I use Nichromedy uh, with all the wires I use in the making of these coils. Okay. It's going to measure a little low. It'll probably come out to about 0.22 ish. 0.21. I have a device that can handle this build that I'm throwing it on and batteries that can also handle it as well. It's very key. Throw it on, measure it. I got a measurement of a 0.12. 
and now we are going to get these glowing. One thing you want to look for on your builds, especially on the Griffin or any tank you do, you want to make sure that your coils are inside of the outside barrel section. Because if it touches, it's going to short out. And those are right inside. I'm really happy with this build. There we go. Let's do it. And we're also going to, I'm going to show you how I whip this thing too. I'm just going to pulse it first. I'm pressing it for 35 watts. Let's go to 40. You know, velocity style post, flat on flat connections. This shouldn't be too difficult at all. And I'm t I always take my time at first with uh, fuse clapton's as far as getting them to glow. Because I want them to hold the shape that I have them in. You know, because I did the work to make sure that they're nice and tight and uniform. I want them to stay that way. All four leads are glowing now, as you can see there. And uh, now we're working our way into the coil. Light pinches here. Got a little water in there. Yeah, I built it up, right? And next thing you know, I was just kind of like, ooh, I'll fix that. <laughs> Just a little pulse and nudge at the same time. Really help it along here. At this point, you know, just a little tickle tickle on the back. And there we go. Just a little strum. Doesn't take much. Doesn't take much to strum out the griffin. There we go. You see that water kind of boiling. So not bad. Not bad at all. And right on it, right on that airflow. Now, I encourage you, man, if you feel like your build, you, you can do this with your build, I encourage you to do it. And then let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Man, I sure am enjoying it. I really am. Now we get a wicket, which could not be easier. Now, before, when I did the temp control build in you know, the temp control build I did in this tank. Now, this is going to be just a touch different. Just a touch different, but not much. Your favorite cotton, insert here. Get some cotton here. This might be just enough. No, it's not going to be enough. Got some cotton bacon version 2 here. Make sure I get enough to fill these coils nice and snug. I wouldn't say like super tight, but but snug for sure. That might even be a hair too much. And what I like to do here, with my cotton bacon or whatever you're using, you know, with, when it comes to these kind of things, is I just rip in half. And I use where I ripped it from the middle, you know, to put the point on that side. Try and keep this in the shot for you. I'm just gonna massage it. It's like a spliff, man. At least it feels like rolling a spliff. Pinch it at the top before you roll it down. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Do it again. And I'm not like pinching the living bejesus out of this, you know, I wanna keep it fluffy. I'm just I just rolling it fairly fast. There we go. Until it gets that tube that I like. Pop in here. So we're gonna thread this in. Boom. Now I have resistance. I wanna tug on this side as I pull through on this side. And people say, well Trev, that feels great. People say, well Trev, you know, why do you keep saying the same thing over and over again? Like we've seen it. There's a lot of people out there that are just building the Griffin maybe for the first time today. And they're looking up for tips and tricks on how to do that. So here we go. Slide this through. I feel resistance from the coil, from the cotton. Now I'm gonna tug on this side as I pull through this side simultaneously, nice and smooth, ready? 
just like that. That's very, that has fan, that felt so good. What was I looking for with that? I was looking for it to come snug. That's what I was looking to feel. My if you look at the coil, it's full from one end to the other. And bulging out these sides. That's what I want. Now this side's going to be a little tricky to, uh, to describe to you. Two snips, we'll be done with this. So, I take my scissors, I put it in an angle, I aim it towards one of the, the posts right here, I get underneath that cotton, I aim it at a sharp angle, and I snip it. I'm going to do it again, this side. Sharp angle right to the middle of that back post, snip it. You're going to have that. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to flip this around and do it again. Aim for the post. Sharp angle, snip. Again, snip. Now that I've done that, take it off the stand. Now we have this little star, right? Now I'm going to clip these off, all the points. I'm going to take my scissors, I'm going to lay it completely against the bottom. I mean, I got my, my scissors laying right up there, and I'm just going to snip with no fear on all of them. Hopefully that was in the shot. So now we're left with this, right? Ooh, that one didn't work very well. So now I'm looking at this, and I've done this four snips, I've kind of taken off the edges of the star. All right. Kind of taking off the star here. Focus. So I'm looking at this and I'm kind of seeing that this side has a little more than this side. This side has a little more cotton than this side. I'm going to pull it through. Yeah, this side needs a little. I'm going to borrow some. I'm going to borrow some from you, man. Just borrow from both sides, just like that. Double check. Make sure everything looks good. Basically, I want it flush. That's all I want. Now I could leave it like this. And I have. You can leave it just like this, man. You know, use it. It's plugging up the airflow. It's plugging up the juice channels. But we're not gonna do that. This is what I want you to do. I want you to take whatever you like to use to wick things. I'm gonna, I got this kind of smallest micro screwdriver, really thin here. And I'm just gonna take this. And I'm just going to barely push them in here, like this. Do it with, I'm doing it with the lens of the camera. I'm trying to watch what I'm doing here. Just a little bit, just like that. I just barely tucked it in. Same thing. Just tuck it in. Tuck it in on this side. I'm just taking the very bottom of the cotton. You saw right here, hopefully. Yeah, and I just kind of feathered that in there. And on this side, I didn't do anything yet. Just make sure some just a touch is down in there. That's all you want. So really, that's what I did. Now we're going to juice it up. Now we're going to juice it up. And remember, if at the beginning of the video I said I forgot something? My juice. <laughs> so I'm going to get you all set up here. Once. Juice here. This is a waffle that I make, and I'm going to put a little on each coil and fire it. Sucks it right in. I'm gonna do that a few times until I can see that the cotton. Man, I wish you were here to smell this. Just until the cotton, I can see it's starting to take some of the juice, which on this side it is, so that's okay. This side, not so much. Pretty good. We just have just a little bit of cotton in there, right? Now, oh. once. Here it is. 
So I have a pick here, you can use whatever you use to tuck in the cotton at the beginning. And we're just simply going to just gently, remember gently here, just run everything into like a little ball. Shape it. Again, you don't have to do this. I've used it just from those two snips. Well, they're actually technically four. But I'm doing that. On all of them. Gently, you know, if you, if you can put some more down in there, you can. But you don't need to. This one looks like it needs a little more juice. I'm using the juice as a way to mold and keep the cotton at bay so it doesn't go frilly everywhere. Right. That's it. Again. You know, if you push too hard here, the thing is with wet cotton is when you you can mold it really easy like this. You know, I'm just kind of barely touching it. It could use a little more juice, to be honest. But if you push too hard and you go too much on the molding here, as you're just kind of shaping it, going, it, you're basically just aiming it towards that wick channel. That's good. If you go too much when you're doing that, it's awfully difficult to get it back. And that's what I'm looking at. That's all I did. I mean, it's barely in there. If you can look at that, there we go. It's just barely filling the top of that rim. And that's all you ever really need on tanks like this. But as you can see, it's very uniform on how much is on there. And that's it. I already have my Griffin tank filled up. I can back you up. I can just simply go, there should be no resistance from your cotton whatsoever, and I just tighten that up, I'll go wide open with it, you're done. No leaks, no problem. Back you up. So there you go, man, I'm about to die battery. So there you go, man. Pretty simple, right? You can really see the juice flowing up to the tanks. It's really activating all four. Just, there we go. And you're going to see that constantly when building it like this. And it works. Let's see, 40 watts. Close airflow. <laughs> There's a bump in flavor. Yeah, I'll never build it the same. Uh, this is something I definitely like. Check it out, man. If you feel like you might enjoy something like this, go for it. Just thought I'd throw it out there, uh, as I do with everything that I am enjoying. So, it's worth the hassle. And, uh, stoked. Don't know much to say. I know it's ain't a review. Just wanted to show you the build, man. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, please feel free to email me at tjbapingreviews at aol.com or simply comment down below, dude. Let's end this. Classic. Classic form. Yeah. See you guys. Peace.